Hello, my name is Dan Anderson, and today I will talk about installing and running Hyperledger Avalon. Uh, this is part two. Part one, I showed how to uh, install Avalon using Docker. And today I will talk about installing Avalon without Docker. That is what's called standalone mode, where you install mode. Avalon directly on your Ubuntu um, instance um, running on hardware or virtual machine. <clears throat> so first I'll be talking about prerequisites before you install and, and make and run Avalon hardware and software. Then I'll talk about cloning and finally building Avalon. So let's start here. Uh, we, we go first to github.com hyperledger slash Avalon and you see this is the, the Avalon source repository and for building um, there's my name by the way for building we go down to here and click on the build document which takes you to right here So we'll skip Docker base build, but first we need to clone it. So we type this line in here. Um, get clone HTTPS hub.com hyperledger Avalon in this specific branch. Now you have two choices when you download and clone the source repository. You could always download the latest branch, the latest commit. Um, that's the most dangerous way, but you get the latest and greatest. Um, it may not work. It may have some stuff broken, but it has the latest and greatest. <clears throat> I recommend um, using what has been tagged as the most stable release that has been extensively tested and and has the least chance of having problems. So at the moment, the branch is pre-release-v0.5, but that will change over over time. So look at, at your build.md document to find out what the current stable release is. Actually, I need to clone it right here in my home directory. So then we skip the Docker based build and go to standalone build. So we want to follow the prereqs before we start building it. So let's go to the prerequisites document. Um, for hardware, you have a choice of having an SGX or an Intel SGX or a non-SGX. It's um, if you don't have an Intel SGX, you could use a simulator, and that's usually just the easiest. Um, you could use a, a virtual machine, like here today we'll be using Oracle VirtualBox, but other virtual machines also work. It could be, for example, Microsoft Hyperledger or Hyper-V, their virtual machine software, or others. Uh, you could also use a cloud, um, for example, AWS. Um, if I, I recommend using Microsoft Azure because they support SGX in their cloud instances. So if you want to use SGX, um, you have that option with their cloud. That's probably the easy, easiest way to deploy and use SGX, Intel SGX if you don't have the bare metal hardware. And of course you always uh, install on a NUC or a computer or your, or your laptop. Um, but what I'm doing today is I have Ubuntu installed on Oracle VirtualBox on my laptop, which happens to be running on Windows, Microsoft Windows. And we need to be running Ubuntu 1804. That's a long-term support or long LTS version that is 
supported for a long time. In this case, this version is supported till 2023. Um, so let's go through the prereqs. Have list of environment variables that you need. That's just a good reference. And some packages. So um, you install all these packages. Uh, using app get. I won't do that now because it's I already have them installed. <clears throat> then you install these pip or Python packages after that, including um, a JSON and the Solidity compiler there. We could skip Docker, skip installing Docker, but I recommend doing that um, because it's nice to have that option. You. In that case, it'd be Docker and Docker Compose is what we, we use um, here with Avalon. Software Guard extensions, uh, that's Intel SGX um, that runs the, uh, Intel SGX is an instance, is a hardware implementation of a TE or a trusted execution environment. And that's what Avalon Enclaves um, currently support. And we hope to run or be able to support other hardware enclaves in the future. But in our case, we'll be running in S Intel SGX software mode or simulator mode. So, so let's go down to OpenSSL. Uh, we need to install um, this recent version of, of OpenSSL uh, because the Ubuntu does not have that recent version. It needs to be 1.1D. And you, get, you could get a Debian package from debian.org here and you install that. Um, if you have problems in installing that uh, version of OpenSSL, you can always also download the source and build it. That's a lot more involved. So the preferred method is to um, just download these pre-built packages. So. Then we also need a version of, SG, of OpenSSL that has um, Intel SGX support. And this is what this is about. <clears throat> so you, this has to be built from source. You, you um, clone this Intel SGX SSL repository, which is, has the Intel SGX and OpenSSL integration, and you follow these steps to download and compile and install them. So, and that's already been done on my virtual machine, so we won't cover that. So then we go back to standalone, standalone build. So as you might remember, we just cloned Avalon here. So let's change to the Avalon directory. directory. And our TCF home direct, um, environment variable should be set to that. Yeah, that's correct. And and it's easiest if you put that um, setting in your bash rc, dot bash rc file. So every time you log in, the TCF home variable will be set. So, and all you do is say echo or export TCF home. equals home Dano Avalon in this case. Okay, <clears throat> now if you're using SGX hardware, you need to set your SGX mode variable. <clears throat> and we don't have it set, and the default's a simulator mode, so we don't set that. And so we're going to skip this step. If you have Intel SGX, you need to get a um, SPID and a key. Um, and that that is done using this um, link, api.portal.trustedservices.intel.com. So, or if you use um, DCAP, which is data center um, attestation protocol, you could set up your own um, um, attestation and not use Intel's service. So it's, it's your choice, but we will skip this because we're using the simulator. So we go down to step 
six. If you're behind a proxy, you need to set a proxy variable. Um, and that's corporate dependent. Um, and you have to find your administrator or whatever to find out what the setting is. Okay. Next, we're going to create a Python virtual environment. So that step is, is optional, but it, it, it's kind of good because it, it puts all the pip packages and Python pip packages under your repository and kind of creates an isolated environment that you could create and, and destroy. And you can have multiple instances ins instances of them. So let's let's do that. So we cd to the tools build directory and type Python minus M B E N V dev. It creates a underscore dev directory. So resource dev bin activate, and now we're in our Python virtual environment. And you could tell when you get that underscore dev prompt there. So let's install these pip packages under our Python virtual environment. Pip3 install, upgrade, setup, tools, JSON RPC, Solidity compiler, rep3, color logging, twisted, real, and Tomo file support. Okay, looks like that's done. Um, next, we build Avalon, and that's done with a make clean. Uh, if you just downloaded uh, your source, you don't need to do make clean, but I just do it anyway. Nothing clean. So then we type make, and that takes a while. It builds several components. Um, here's a common SGX components. Some example. Avalon workloads, workers it's building here, heart disease application, inside out API access files outside the enclave, simple wallet application. So, and uh, worker code is written in C++. So the client or requester code is, is mostly written in Python, but you could use anything that supports some um, REST API, for example, uh, JavaScript. And in the future, uh, we plan to add other language SDKs besides C++ for your workers. So, this will take several minutes. I think I'll stop recording here and resume after this is all, all done. Okay, that actually didn't take that long, about a couple of minutes, but um, it built at the final steps we're building an Avalon listener to listen to requests and finally some real files there. So let's um, let's try running it. So we go down to testing. So we go to let's see we're in the tools build directory. Let's go to TCF home scripts. Let's see. And we don't need to do this. We already we're still in the underscore dev Python environment. So that's fine. 
we run TCS startup. Let's look at the TCS. Oops, what happened here? Let's go down to testing. We run TCS startup minus S. Let's look at some other options there for TCS startup. With minus H. So we have minus L, that's if you want to specify the LMDB server. The default is localhost on 9090. And <clears throat> you only need to do that if you're, let's say, running it in a Docker environment. In that case, instead of localhost, it'd be the name of the container that runs L LMDB. You can also terminate um, TCS uh, um, Avalon by using a minus T option. Or if you're running Avalon on a terminal, you just type control C to terminate all the um, um, components of Avalon. And what else? Um, oh yeah, you should run it with minus S because that um, starts the key value um, component, which is uses LMDB before Avalon. So, so let's, Let's start it now. TCS startup minus S. So if it starts a listener enclave manager. And now it um, is listened to request every 10 seconds here. Let's 